we good? Yeah, thanks for the jacket. You can go out to eat. 
if you need to drink alcohol, you can have a glass of wine or you know a shot of tequila. Don't think that you're going to be perfect for the next six weeks because it's just not realistic and you set yourself up for failure. And the goal is this next six weeks is to get you guys in really good habits so that at the end, we're gonna talk, talk about reverse dieting and how to end the six weeks and how to be successful moving forward. But I want you guys to establish healthy habits to maintain the weight you've lost, to maintain your performance in the gym, whatever your goals are, okay? So don't stress about being perfect. Why am I qualified to give this talk? I've been in uh, the health and fitness industry for over the, uh, the past 15 years. I've taken 12, uh, well, actually, I've taken 10 nutrition classes at the collegiate level. I've taken eight at the bachelor's level and two at the master's level. Um, and I am a nerd when it comes to this stuff. So I've actually decided because of CrossFit health and how passionate Glassman is, about making so many massive changes within the CrossFit community that I'm, I'm enrolled to get my master's in nutrition starting in May and I want to become a registered dietitian and work with CrossFit Health, health because of how impactful this community is on people. Uh, ask me any questions you have throughout the next six weeks. Text me, email me. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you guys 100%. I have no clue. We can go to Google. Um, you know, I have a lot of manuals we can research, but I will tell you if I don't know. Okay, basic nutrition. Who here knows what a macro is? <laughs> it's super easy. Macros are protein, carbs, and fat. Somehow along the way, we got this term macro and it's become a buzzword in the nutrition community. There are macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are the big things you eat every day. Your bread, your turkey, your eggs, Micronutrients are your vitamins, your magnesium, your vitamin C, okay? So that's all it means, is a macro. Protein, chicken, um, beef, eggs, dairy, some macros so, or some foods have a bunch of different things in them, right? So you're gonna have, your dairy has fat, carbs, and protein in it. Some protein sources are just pure protein and with a little bit of fat. Don't be confused with that. That's one of the things, I have this great breakdown of how we're gonna teach you guys how to break down your macros. Uh, and we're gonna help you understand how to, how to fit your macros, how to fit your foods into your macros. Carbs, gummy bears, bread, pasta, ice cream can count as a carb if it's low fat. Fat. <laughs> it's butter or butter. <laughs> Uh, fat, butter, mayonnaise, ranch, bacon is a fat. Bacon does not count as a protein because it's, I know, sorry to break your heart. It's almost all fat. It's got like one gram of protein in it. I'm not a huge fan of bacon for that reason. People are like, oh, I'm getting all my protein from bacon. Yeah, you just eat 200 grams of fat, too. Okay, questions. Anybody have questions about what a macro is? Does that make sense? Cool. All right. How do we know how much to eat? So, I'm gonna break your hearts again. A calorie is a scientific term, and it's like raising one, it's in your pamphlet, but it's like raise one degree of water, one degree Celsius or something, and then they converted those calories into a thousand calories of food. It's very complicated, and it's not an exact science. So if I tell you guys to eat 2,000 calories in a day, those calories are not exactly like you could need 2,500 calories and I put you at 2,000 and your body metabolizes that food differently because you're stressed or because you're a man. Or so, so calories are not an exact science. It's the best that we can do unless we did blood tests and you know the VO2 max and all of that. And even then it's still not super accurate. We are going to do the best we can with the data we have. That's why DEXA scans are so great because it gives me your body fat percentage and it gives me your lean muscle mass. So like I broke down with Ashley, I showed her how if you want to get, say you're at 23% body fat and you want to get down to 20% body fat, like how much lean muscle mass you have to gain and how much fat you have to lose in order to make those changes. Um, and your calories, where the majority of people, who here is going to go on a, a bulk? Who here wants to gain weight, gain muscle? Gain muscle. Gain muscle. Well, <laughs> gain muscle with having a caloric uh, excess. Okay. Uh, I don't know, but 
The majority of you are going to be cutting over the next six weeks, which the term cut just means that we're creating a calorie deficit, okay? And it's actually perfect timing because we're going to be going into open season and Heidi is programming lots of conditioning for the next six weeks, so it'll tie in perfectly. <laughs> so when we cut, I'm going to put you, I'm going to give you your macros for the first week and it's going to be a baseline. And then we're going to talk about how to decrease those calories, those macros over that six weeks, because you want to create a bigger and a bigger deficit. But if we set your calories consistently over the six weeks and we don't create enough of a deficit, your metabolism is going to adjust, which is also why we're going to reverse diet. When you get to the end of the six weeks, I'm going to give you all of the information you guys need to actually come out of that six week cycle and not go back to eating. Say if you were eating 3,000 calories to maintain your weight right now after the next, after the end of the six weeks, we're not gonna go on week seven right to 3,000 calories because your body is gonna be like, hey, extra, and then it's gonna sort as fat and then we're gonna be screwed, okay? So it's referred to as reverse dieting. It's super, super easy. We'll go into that if your time, we'll go into that in more detail. Um, otherwise, I will help you towards the end of the six weeks getting back out of it. All right, the nitty gritty. Ready? How fun is that one? Mm -hmm. It's actually not that complicated. So, your calories, like I said. So if I put someone at 2,000 calories, right, it's gonna be broken down into your macronutrients. How much protein, carbs, and fat do you need to sustain where you're at now or to make changes? I'm gonna use 2,000 as an example. This is what the RDA or one of those groups decided like is the average that people need, which is not bad. I like people at 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. I will make changes. This 30% protein puts the majority of individuals at a gram per pound of body weight protein. The reason that we do this is twofold. So I want you guys to stay sustained with your food. I don't want you to be hungry. I don't want you to feel miserable. The more protein and fat you have in your diet, the less calories overall you can consume and still feel good, okay? And also, that gram per pound of body, of body weight is what scientists, nutrition, whatever, have determined is, a, is the ideal effective dose to build muscle, okay? Anything less than that, and you potentially are not recovering appropriately. So, this is what it looks like. And here's the fun now. 40% carb, 30% protein, 30% fat. So I send you guys your macros. This is what I sent you. I tell you I want you to consume 200 grams of carbs a day, 150 grams of protein, 66 grams of fat. How did I get that math? A, a gram of carbs has four calories in it. A gram of protein has four calories in it. A gram of fat has seven, or excuse me, nine calories in it. A gram of alcohol has seven calories. We're gonna talk about alcohol in a bit. When you get your macros, I'm going to already have calculated, I'm gonna get this caloric number, how much, how many calories I think you need based off of your goals, and I'm gonna break it down for you doing the math already. So you're gonna get this. You're gonna get 200 grams of carbs, 150 grams of protein, 66 grams of fat, or whatever you need. Then, we're gonna talk about, I'm going to give you some guidelines to figure out what your day should look like. How many people here eat three times a day? Who eats four times a day? Five? How many times a day do you eat? Four times six. <laughs> you need to be fed, Shauna. I know. <laughs> I just, it's hard to eat more than like four or five times a day. It's not. It's not. <laughs> guidelines and they're in your packet and everybody uh, I emailed that packet to you as well but we want the majority of your carbs in the earlier part of your day and we want the majority of your protein later so the way food works your food is going to align with your circadian rhythm okay which is your 24-hour cycle of hormones that help you regulate when to stay awake and when to go to bed and it aligns with your cortisol levels and your melatonin, which are part of your circadian rhythm. So we have found across the board, people do better when they eat more carbs in the morning and higher protein at night. Does that change at all with when you train? Like if I work out in the morning versus at nighttime? To a certain extent, yes. 
Um, and that, so your pre and post training, I want your pre-training meal to be carb heavy and your post-training meal to be carb heavy. So when I send you your macros and you get this number, and I'm gonna help you with all of this, you guys, you will not be alone in any of it. Uh, but it's really good for you to get as much information as possible. So I'm gonna say, let's say, Amanda, you train at 10 a.m., right? And you get up, what time do you normally get up? Seven? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, your meal one, is going to be your pre-training meal. So it's gonna be carb heavy, heavy by default. Then your post-training meal will be carb heavy by default, okay? And then you'll make up the rest of it in your dinner meal. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you'll have a snack that you'll fit in somewhere. So the most important things are you're giving yourself carbs before you work out and you're giving yourself carbs <coughs> after you work out. There is a whole page in there about why carbs are your friend. I understand that everybody has this perception now that carbs are the enemy. Go to do keto, go to get into ketosis, blah, blah, blah. If you are an obese individual that sits on the couch all day and is addicted to carbohydrates, they are your enemy. If you are a crossfitter in a glycogen dependent sport, carbs are converted to, to glucose, which is converted into glycogen, you are using carbs as fuel. If you are feeling like shit on your workout, if you're not sleeping well, if you're foggy at work, you probably need more carbs. In fact, I just read a study just a couple days ago that they were saying from a longevity standpoint, they actually believe that the ideal diet is 50% carbs, which I think most people don't feel good on that. I think it makes you feel bloated, heavy. You might have um, that postprandial lull after your 12, one o'clock meal in the middle of the day. But that's why I think 40% carbs is good. And then you're giving me feedback on those macros. If you feel like shit, if you guys, you know, if you think it's too heavy, then, then we can make adjustments. So, I broke this down assuming that you're going to train sometime either between this meal or this meal, okay? This is your dinner meal, this is lunch, this is breakfast. Who here does intermittent fasting? Anybody? Okay, so I am not against intermittent fasting on rest days, I am against it on training days. I think that the majority of individuals when you're doing IF, Intermittent fasting is eating in an X amount of window. Again, from a longevity standpoint, they believe that it is protective. We go into, it's called autophagy, where you eat your cells and blah, blah, blah. But from an athlete standpoint, it's more realistic to be eating on a regular basis, especially the majority of you probably don't eat consistently enough. And intermittent fasting, unless you're really consistent about sitting down for some big meals, you end up under eating. So, I would challenge you to try eating more consistently. You don't have to eat right when you get up, but I would challenge you to eat within like an hour to two hours and play around with it. Nutrition, this, this is nothing is set in stone. Every person is different. If you feel better on IF, then, then do it, but I would still challenge you to try. Uh, so, pre-training, carb heavy, post-training, carb heavy. Cool? What if you're doing two a day? If you're coming in the morning and you're doing CrossFit, CrossFit requires carbs. If you're coming in the afternoon and doing CrossFit, CrossFit requires carbs. If you're doing barbell in the morning and CrossFit at night, barbell does not require as many carbs. Your body is quite happy <coughs> using a little bit of fat and whatever you've got in your system, okay? You don't have to eat before barbell. You do need to eat before CrossFit. Cool? Mm -hmm. Are there questions at this point? I have been talking really fast. So if you work out early in the morning, if you can, um, especially yeah. someone like you that's still remarkably lean, um, your body is going to appreciate a banana. And I'm not trying to be facetious, or uh, if you can stomach it, and I know some of you guys, like, like especially the 5.30 crew, they're literally getting up at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, if you are training early in the morning, should you eat beforehand? So, Don't worry, Jalen. It's not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you go into that, I think intermittent fasting for me is is um, not intentional. It's just sort of like 5.30 in the morning and the day before 30 I can. Right. So what we're going to do there is we're going to make our dinner meal and our snack at night very carb heavy. 
your, your uh, sleep cycle uses carbohydrates, it uses glycogen, right, to process sleep. So we want to make sure that you're not waking up in a glycogen depleted state. So if you eat <coughs> carb heavy meal, you know, you can even, you can play around with it. There, there's no, like I said, there's no perfect, um, but I would like to see probably 30 to 40% of your carbs before you go to bed if you're training early in the morning. Does that make sense? And I have great news for you. You can eat Rice Krispie treats. They are an <laughs> awesome source of carbs before you go to bed. You want easily digested, digestible carbs. If you guys have trouble sleeping, you can have, you can make Rice Krispie treats. You can have a banana. You can have a bowl of cereal, okay? There, there are no foods off limits. It's just the amount of food and when you eat it. Cool? Well, uh, Sasha does intermittent fasting and she was saying that she does that primarily because she trains early in the morning and it just it works well for her schedule so if I have an athlete that's working that's working out early in the morning and can't eat then I want them to eat a big meal uh, before they go to bed so if we train at night then would we just kind of make it more of an even distribution for carbs mm -hmm. yeah uh, so again, and you get a snack as well, and I like this snack because if you find, some people just don't really like having a lot of carbs midday. Some people, you know, you know what your body enjoys, what it prefers, uh, so your snack is your room to play around with. If you want to make four meals, you want to take these and break them up equal and perfect, that's fine. I, there is an ideal, but I mean, is ideal here none of us we don't fit the mold you know science is black and white and then they take the human body and it's like then we're trying to fit into that mold uh, so do what you need to do to feel good to fuel your workouts the most important things are you need to be getting adequate carbs okay that's very very important who is a keto person if you don't mind anybody did you like it uh, and there's weight yet. It works. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to touch on this very quickly. It's in your pamphlet, but ketosis is the act of your body using fat as fuel. Keto came out as this amazing diet, but it was used for neurological conditions. It treats Parkinson's, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis. They believe that it affects the excitability in the brain because carbohydrates, when you eat a carb, your brain is like, hell yeah, it's very, very happy. It calms the brain down when you're on keto. But from a long-term standpoint, women lose their cycles. It's, it's not, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, we're not designed to stay on keto long-term. If you want to go hibernate in the winter and live on keto, that makes sense because it's, it's for using fat as, as fuel and not consuming carbs. But we are active and our, body, our bodies prefer carbs as fuel. Does that make sense? I can just give a testament as a woman. I was like, oh, I want to lose all this baby weight. So I did keto for like, I did it for what? I don't know, strictly about six weeks as best I could with three kids. Uh, and my body became leptin resistant and I got all the reverse fat ass shit back when I stopped. So don't do it if you're a woman. Yeah, you lose, we lose our cycle. So from an evolutionary standpoint, it doesn't and make I sense. And I totally fuck my cycle. Yeah. And I don't even know where my cycle is right now. So. And it's not. <laughs> it's like, where are you? <laughs> Okay, when do you train? And I train at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. 
So I need to have either a meal or a snack 90 minutes before I train. And then I want you to eat your next meal during that window of gains post-workout. Barbell Shark did that, window of gains. An hour after you eat. You have to eat after you work out. Oh uh, yeah, I go till 8 or 9 o'clock at night without eating Oh. Like, I'll work out 4 or 5, I'll wait till 8 or 9. Yeah, no, don't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, like, uh, how, how close to working out? I've heard like a 30 minute window, an hour window. Right. Hour window is ideal. Hour. Yeah, if you go beyond that hour window, so, I'm gonna try really hard not to get too scientific on you guys, but your body gets stressed out when you exercise. The act of exercising is actually breaking those muscles down, and the repair process is how you get stronger. So you come in here, you do your five rep max back squat, and you're actually tearing those muscles apart, right? That's part of the reason they hurt. And then you go, and your body is like, shit, they just did this to me, I need to make it stronger. And it's like a weld, it builds it bigger and stronger. And then we keep doing it over and over again, and we get bigger and stronger. Your body has to have fuel for that. The recovery process, it actually begins while you're in the gym, but your insulin levels, the little boat that carries your carbohydrate into the cell, I love that analogy, because it made sense to me, I was like, okay. So that, though, you have lots of little boats in your blood, <laughs> and you need to have carbs to start fueling that process. If you do not eat post-workout, your cortisol levels are up. Cortisol breaks down muscle. So you have these spiked cortisol levels, and you have this body trying to repair. It's not going to work, okay? You have to eat after you work out. If you're going to go and you're, you're not going to be able to eat a good meal for two or three hours afterwards, and get in the habit of, I'm gonna sell some perfect bars right now, get in the habit of eating a perfect bar and a scoop of protein, or have a snack ready for you. Eat a banana and get some protein in you, um, you know, with like some nuts or something like that. And that is a side fact. After workouts, you wanna minimize how much fat you're eating. Fat slows down the digestion process. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Under 20 grams is your goal, okay? When you eat too much fat, so you go home and you're eating that like omelet with avocado and ranch and bacon and then you're having toast with butter on it, all that fat is slowing. What? Am I ruining your life right now? I know, I'm sorry. Everybody's so angry. I'm trying to say you're up for games. <laughs> No more, no more fat, up. no, 20 grams is your goal. Um, it, don't be perfect, you don't have to be perfect, but you can't be eating like all of the fat right afterwards. They are, but it, it, I need you to eat something. They're, and they're less than, I think they're 18 They're under grams. 20, yes. they're under 20. Uh, Hold on one second. Is there like a website or store where you can have practical examples of like, what is 60 grams of carbs? Like, how do we combine that together into something that makes sense in a meal? Do we just look at nutrition labels or? I can actually send you, um, I have, yeah when, when, yeah, when I was doing meal plans that way for my clients, I have like uh, protein, how many grams of, how many ounces of chicken you have to eat for, uh, to get how many grams of protein. Um, so yeah, I can send you guys all of that. Are we counting vegetables towards our carbs? Good question. Uh, are you counting vegetables towards your carbs? You have to eat vegetables. I also agree with that. Micronutrients. I agree with that. 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 <laughs> but stuff like sweet potato can go. Is there a concern with getting too much starch by using like sweet potatoes as your main carb nope. source? Um, the only thing I would say is some people, it, gluten intolerance, gluten sensitivity is a thing. There are a bunch of different theories as to why people are gluten insensitive. Or <coughs> gluten not gluten. Thank you. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a thing. Like if you eat a pizza 
and all the things on there are clean and there is no real reason for you to feel like crap and bloated. You very well may not process gluten. And there's also a level. Some people can have a bagel in the morning and be fine. Some people can eat three bagels all day and be fine. Some people have a bite of a bagel and they feel like crap. Uh, awesome. So yeah, you can use that. You can also, I have some uh, some spreadsheets you guys can have. So I have a question. So let's pass me over if we count calories. This sounds like we're counting grams of the various uh, macros. You're, you're doing your macros, correct. So okay. calories are, it's a great place to start, but if you're eating 500 grams of carbs and nothing else, you're going to feel like shit, um, and you're not going to be recovering, yada, yada. So your macros are far more important because I need to make sure, again, you're getting enough protein and I need to make sure that your carbs are appropriately structured throughout your day. And then uh, women especially have a propensity to not eat enough fat. Yeah. Soda burrito, and you guesstimate. So, a fist is generally about four ounces of protein, and you're looking at your uh, tortilla, and you can say you can just put in there a carne asada burrito in your My Fitness Pal, uh, but you can also break it down. The tortilla, and those generally are like 60 to 80 calories, and then how much meat it looks like is in there, um, and then assume they put sour cream or avocado or things like that. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have one meal, if you have one meal like three days a week that doesn't fit everything, you're okay. The reason that, I mean, first off, you guys are all in amazing shape. I, I know that in your heads you probably sit in front of the mirror and pick apart your body and you know don't like where you're at. Except for you, Chuck. <laughs> supposed to be because you're already doing awesome. This is just about eating consistently what you're supposed to eat to help you crush it even more in here. It doesn't, you can eat a carne asada burrito occasionally. It's the, what you do, oh, <laughs> your face, it's what you do every single day that matters. How would you change up what you're eating during the day if you're working out in the morning and so you're here at 6.30, right? You're doing the 6.30 a.m. class. And you're... What? Did you already answer this question? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. It's fine. We'll talk it's, later then. No, I mean, that's <laughs> the, the crux of what we're doing. I'm easily distracted by people talking around me. <laughs> <laughs> you just figure out how to eat in the morning to fuel your workout, what, what you can stomach, and then what you need to fuel for the rest of the day, and then what you're doing in the afternoon. And every every case is different. Like if you're coming and doing CrossFit in the morning, then barbell at night, and then Roderick, you're gonna want to make sure that your fuels for Roderick afterwards. So uh, you, you sit down, and figure out does it does it make sense? So she said do carb heavy before my training, carb heavy after after training. Well now I'm training twice. How do I break those carbs up so that I'm getting an adequate amount of carbs? And after. Oh, so I'm not eating more carbs than you're saying you're supposed to eat a day because I'm right. doing so you, carb heavy four times instead of twice. Right. So carb heavy four. It's carb heavy for your workout, but since you're you're gonna have to break it up even more. So you'll have you you'll be having one, two, three, four, five meals in a snack. That's your six times a day. Yeah. Yeah. So the same amount of carbs. Yeah. Julio, yeah. yeah. did you have a question? <laughs> 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 this is what I'm working with. <laughs> I'm used to it. And then I get in trouble for squirrel chasing. I'm like, you started it. <laughs> okay, I, I have something to add. Um, who's, this is their first time ever counting macros. What's that? Your first time ever counting macros. <coughs> okay, so I started counting macros about a year ago. And when I first started, it was insanely overwhelming. I was like, I don't know how to break down what's in a slice of bread or what's in you know, this chicken pasta dish. Like it, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So don't feel like everybody else has this leg up on you because they're not asking the questions. It took me like three or four weeks to really understand 
what worked for me as far as like what I can meal prep, you know, because I'm, I'm not somebody who cooks, so I eat pretty much the same stuff day in and day out. And then also like how to stack around when I was working out. So I just try to like make you guys feel less overwhelmed because counting macros as a beginner is a lot. It's just FYI. And then I'm here. Yeah. I'm like, and you have a good resource. I, yeah, I'm at the gym. This is my jam. I love this shit. Yeah. I will spend hours with you guys. I didn't have oh. Well, I know this is a nutrition challenge, and we'll be using some kind of tracker to document our nutrition. Um, will you also be discussing us, like, documenting our workouts as well? I know it's not. Uh, so the only, like for example, sorry, to cut you off, the my fitness, my, yeah, out, my fitness pal. Like sometimes the weightlifting doesn't really factor in with the calorie deficit. Thank you for bringing that up. It's okay. So uh, she was asking about tracking workouts with my fitness pal. Okay, very, very, very important. Almost important as your why. When you go into my fitness pal, I am going to swear even if you disregard the fuck out of what they tell you to put for your calories. They want you to eat like 1200 calories a day and lose. I don't want any person in here to lose an ounce of uh, muscle if we can prevent, prevent that. Uh, so when you go in there and you're going to put your parameters in there, you can set it without paying. You do not have to pay. Lose it is the same. You're going to put 2000 calories and then you're going to set your percentages doesn't have to be perfect. If I send you these macros and you can't get that, you can't get those perfect macros, it's okay. Just get as close as you can, okay? Uh, and that being said, when you put in your workouts, you don't get to eat more because you did a six mile run and it says you burned 600 calories, okay? Your macros are set for your activity level that you've communicated to me. And I'm asking you that activity level. So Cody said he was gonna email me all of your DEXA scan results. So I have that baseline number. I still need to know your goal and your activity level. Your activity level is, it's not like one through five. It's I CrossFit five days a week and I'm a firefighter. I CrossFit two days a week and I sit, you know, I, I'm at my desk five, for five, 10 hours a day. So like for me, like I'm always on my feet. And then if you say I'm always on my feet, I, I know about how active you are. If yeah, you can say I'm always sitting. I can can guess to me. And I know each one of you, I've seen you. So it's not like if you tell me I'm always sitting and you're like a super, super lean person, you're using more calories just to exist. So I, I can adjust your calories based off of that. Uh, yeah, but that's very important. I need your activity level and your goals. If you signed up for the like six week food prep from the meal prep, whatever, are you going to provide them what our macros are? Or is it safe to assume that the pre packaged meals should already account for these macros? So, what I've been working really closely with Brett, and when you guys get your meals, it's going to show the macros on there. You're going to input those macros into my fitness pal, and those are going to be, and he, the way he does his meals, it's about 40, 30, 30 percent. Yeah. Okay, other questions? I've got a couple other things. Are you just stretching? Yes. Okay, right. got a couple other things. What? Um, are you gonna be able to count the off days for the I don't want you to change your calories on your off days. It's very important. This is something that as a nutritionist, I just recently learned because the old science was, and yes, we get stuck in that whole field too, that you should be decreasing your, you should be decreasing your carbs and you should be decreasing your overall calories on your rest days. You don't actually want to do that. We will potentially have less if I've got an athlete that is training three hours a day, five days a week, and on their rest days, they're not doing much at all. I'm not gonna be having them have as many calories, but I'm not gonna put them in a super low base because that's your recovery day. You need those calories to recover. So if I don't give you enough and you're in a deficit, you're not recovering appropriately. Cool? So you guys are not going to be starving on your rest days. Very important. Okay. Alcohol. Who plans to drink over the next six weeks? All day her day. <laughs> <laughs> what? Already lost. Already lost? Yeah. <laughs> alcohol. The rules on alcohol. Drink clear. Okay? Tequila, rum, vodka. Don't put anything in it. The clearer and the cleaner the better. When you drink alcohol, your body stores those alcohol calories immediately as fat. 
Not only does it do that, it stores all the food in your system as fat too, because alcohol, I love to drink. Alcohol is a toxin, I do. I, I, I can't, guys, I, I appreciate drinking, but alcohol is a toxin. It is broken down into aldehyde in your body, okay? That's why you feel like crap after you drink. So if you're going to drink, minimize it and try not to eat when you're drinking. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. What about after? What, you, what time of day are you drinking? But when I do, I usually eat more Right, and so that alcohol is in your system. So it takes up to six to eight hours to metabolize the alcohol fully, depending on what you've been drinking. While your body is processing that alcohol, it puts all other digestive processes on hold to get that alcohol out of your system because it's a toxin. So it will slow down digestion and store all of those calories as fat to process them. No, beer makes you fat. <laughs> Sorry. Wait until after the, the six week challenge. Which brings me to, okay, no, one more thing. Sleep. Who gets eight hours of sleep here? I'm so proud of most of you. Okay, so we are going to add this to our challenge. You guys are going to be getting seven to eight hours of sleep. And Who wants to babysit? <laughs> <laughs> Just leave them Megan, they'll be fine. Put some fit aids and some perfect bars in there. They'll be good. Okay, except for Megan or, you know, if you have an unrealistic life, like you're, I mean, nurses don't really get eight hours of sleep. Uh, but in general, I want you guys to be sleeping. Sleep, lack of sleep causes your cortisol levels to be higher. Spiked cortisol levels cause you to crave unnecessary foods like carbohydrates, okay? You are going to be struggling already with new habits and trying to maintain discipline over the next six weeks. Set yourself up for success. If you get good sleep every night, you will be able to make better food choices during the day. Cool? That's, that's a... What are you doing? What? Ah, okay. <laughs> Ideally, yes. So, I don't know, there's, like, I've, I've heard different arguments about if you're getting six hours of sleep and then you get a two-hour nap, are you still in a sleep deficit? But it definitely affects your metabolic processes if you're not getting a full eight every night. So you should be, if you can, you should be. Uh, recovery very very important no more five days a week straight okay like i said exercise stresses your body out it spikes your cortisol levels if you have spiked cortisol levels your body's breaking down muscle it's defeating the purpose of this challenge where we're trying to gain muscle so you want to be doing three days on one day off two days on you can do active recovery but you want to give your body a break okay so it is flu season so here's my question do you know as far as like respiratory cardiovascular, I've always heard that rule of thumb is only lift weights if you don't have anything going on in your chest and you feel like you're able to, but don't do cardiovascular workouts like if you like have like you know congestion in your chest. I mean, do you know? I don't. I would always just recommend by default that do what make what feels good. I hate working out when I'm sick. You will not. I hate working out when I'm sick. I, I won't even do squats. Um, but if you're somebody, I know other people that that still think you can sweat it out and they want to come in here. I mean, we discourage people. If you're actively, uh, if you have discharge, coughing, things like that, you're technically contagious. So we don't really please want you don't. in the gym. Right. Sweat. I already got sick last week because of someone. Yeah. So. But as far as like, if you want to exercise at home um, or if you go for a run, it's based on how you feel. If you have the energy for it, I mean, you'll find out if it's not, it doesn't work or not. Uh, It's, it is the same, yeah. You can in fact, uh, I was just reading this awesome study, so volume versus um, frequency. So you make gains by the total volume, not the total frequency. So if you want to get stronger, you want to come, 
you know, do two a days, four days a week, rather than go take those, you know, eight workouts and do eight days straight. Does that make sense? So you want the volume, and then you've got to protect yourself because recovery is where gains come from. So you have to give your body a break so that it can repair itself. Well, cool. um, any recommendations on? It really depends. So, uh, who here struggles with going and falling asleep? Majority of people? Okay. Uh, if you eat about 60 minutes before you go to bed and you eat something high carb, it's supposed to not only help you fall asleep, but it's supposed to help you stay asleep. But if you eat too much, then it can affect you falling asleep. So, it's, it's personal, unfortunately. That's why I really like Rice Krispie Treats because it actually is not a remarkably dense food. You have one serving of Rice Krispie Treat um, and it, it's going to condense very fast because it's just marshmallows and Rice Krispies. Um, yeah, and then after that, I mean, it's, it's personal. So 60 minutes, I wouldn't do anything closer than that. Uh, let's see. So we covered alcohol, we covered how to do your macros, we covered stress, recovery, what other questions do you guys have? Will you address supplements in a... Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, so I talked briefly about that in here. Uh, supplementation, I am a huge fan of every one of you using BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. I would advocate for a clean brand. Um, look, they have, there's lots of them that have like food coloring, uh, not good, uh, uh, like sweeteners, I don't want sugar alcohol, stevia is a really good uh, sweetener, but branch chain amino acids are awesome for intra, and they're also awesome if you're going to have a really long day, like you were saying yesterday, you um, you had a bunch of clients, like back to back, and then you had to go work at, at the trend, not trend, yeah, uh, if you're sipping on, if you're doing something like that, sipping on BCAAs throughout the day helps with endurance, um, it also has been shown to affect uh, your recovery and to improve recovery time as well as improve post-workout soreness. So and we don't count that towards this. Nope, they don't count. Oh, yeah. Caffeine? <coughs> I do not. <laughs> oh, that's a hell. I touched on alcohol. Caffeine's scary. Um, I'm not against having caffeine. Caffeine actually boosts your metabolism and it has been shown to be effective in fat loss. But if you are somebody who's addicted to it and has 10 cups a day, it's probably not a good thing, and it also makes you dehydrated. Uh, I mean, who here thinks they have a caffeine problem? What, when do you <laughs> see that? What, how many cups? Three. Yeah, I was like, Tyler and I probably have three cups of coffee in the morning before we even get to work. I probably have another three or four cups yeah. of day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe because I have nothing on me. Three to four 12 ounce servings of yeah. coffee. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. 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 So you already know, like, you probably should cut it down a little bit. But it, it really. Where did you guys sleep? <laughs> right, and that's just it. So as we get older, we, we metabolize the caffeine slower. Uh, and I, I was reading there, it's like. For every cup, for every eight ounce cup of coffee, it takes your body four to six hours to clear the caffeine, and then it, you have a 24 hour half life, meaning the caffeine can stay in your system 24 hours after. Uh, so if you're having trouble sleeping, trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, pay attention when you when you consume your caffeine, and the general rule is to stop drinking at three or four in the afternoon. Well, I'm soft on the caffeine addict. <laughs> Hi, Sasha. <laughs> I have to say, um, what really helped me a couple, like a few years ago is not so much making the cups, but the amount of milligrams you're consuming. I would say I'm well into 500 milligrams a day. Well, which is yeah, it's like five cups. Yeah, it's like five cups. Yeah. yeah. So and that'll be part of our discussion. <laughs> medium, uh, medium brew coffee has more caffeine than dark brew. Yeah. It's really good to know. Um, and I'm not against pre-workout if it's earlier in the day. Okay. We should start like a subgroup. For anyone who struggles with sleep, magnesium is a really, really, really helpful supplement. Yeah, I use Cure, which has been awesome. Ready to be pure pharma, but um, be careful of what magnesium you use. So you have to look into which kind is good for sleep. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's that the calm brand too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to balance it though. If you're having magnesium, you yeah, make sure that you're having calcium and uh, yeah. uh, potassium with it. Is that when you take it? It does matter. You want it before sleep because your your brain is using it specifically for that process. So you want to supplement with extra. So what about? Make sense? Everybody good? Yeah. Alright, awesome. Thank you guys all yeah. for